Hello, I'm Dr. Molesky, and I'd like to welcome you to this video presentation on thyroid dysfunction. And I want to let you know that you've made a very wise decision to watch this. The fact that you're watching this means that you're actively looking for a solution to your thyroid problem. Basically, this is going to be an introduction to what's called functional medicine. We use functional medicine and functional neurology to assess the body and how it's working right. So we're not so much interested in a diagnosis as we are in how your body is working. If we can fix how your body is working, we can help fix the problem, whether it's a thyroid dysfunction or whatever problem you may be encountering of a chronic condition. So first off, let's go into some of my background of who I am. Uh, I've been in practice for over 36 years, and my, I'm licensed as a chiropractic physician in the state of Florida. Let's talk about that a little bit. People come into me and say, gee, why, am I, why is a chiropractor interested in how my thyroid's working? Well, I come from a very medically oriented family. My uh, grandfather was a pediatrician, my mother was a registered nurse, and uh, I was brought up always thinking about medicine and my grandmother always encouraged me to become a doctor. Well, I pursued that and did well in school and uh, I was taking pre-med courses and I was in the, uh, my second year when uh, my sister developed severe migraine headaches. And I mean, these just flat out knocked her down. She was out three days a week, nausea, <coughs> vomiting. Uh, she just couldn't function. She went to all kinds of specialists and while I was in my classes, I was asking my professors, well, what can we do to help her? And I mean, they tried medications. She even got an injection of cortisone up into a sinus of her, in her face, which she said was a horrible, painful thing to go through, but nothing helped her. Well, one of her friends came to her and said, why don't you go to my chiropractor? And I thought, why would you go to a chiropractor for a migraine headache? I mean, there's nothing wrong with your feet. I mean, I didn't know anything about chiropractor or what it was, but it was just so foreign to me. And to my surprise, she said, well, okay, I'll go. And so she went to this chiropractor, and I'll be darned if he worked on her, and she didn't have a headache for a couple days. But then she got one back again, so I thought, okay, it was a coincidence. Well, she went back again, and she treated with him for about a month, and over time, her headaches just went away. She had no more migraine headaches. And I thought, that's really curious why whatever he was doing would help a migraine headache. Well, he gave talks and things about what chiropractic was, and I sat down and listened to him talk about how uh, the body was made to heal itself and it has an inherent ability. It's just an awesome creation that is designed to do that. And if you present the right circumstances, get the nerve system working right and the body balanced, uh, it can heal. And so I did learn that chiropractic is much more about health care. It's one of the largest health care professions in the world. It's not about bad backs. Uh, you know, insurance companies and, you know, Pharmaceuticals consider chiropractic in, in the domain of back pain, but really we're taught about diet, exercise, nutrition, wellness, uh, the proper spine and nerve flow, and the whole gamut of holistic health in a person. So over those 36 years, I've attended thousands of hours of postgraduate education. Uh, I'm thoroughly versed in uh, all the different alternative approaches to diagnosing and, and treating chronic type problems. Uh, in addition to that, I've graduated from the American Functional Neurology Institute, and I'm board certified in integrative medicine. What causes a body to go bad? Basically, when you're born, you're pretty healthy. You look at two-year-olds, you think, where did they get all that energy? And as kids, we're just bouncing around and moving, moving, and, and just nothing wrong. And then all of a sudden, time goes on, and you hit that age of 30 when all heck breaks loose. Well, why is it that over time you start hurting? Well, from the day you're born, you're pounded with stressors. Chemical, physical, and emotional stressors just beat and beat and beat at you to the point where your body just can't take it anymore. And so at the age of 30 or 40 or whenever, you start to exhibit symptoms. Symptoms are your body's way of telling you that something isn't working right. It's like uh, the lights going off in the dashboard of your car. It's telling you there's something wrong. Uh, do something about it. Same thing with a symptom. So what do we do about symptoms, and how do we look at that in the American medical approach to health today? Well, basically, your body becomes unhealthy, and it's going to create a symptom, which is the SX here. And you'll go to your doctor, and he's going to give you a prescription. So let's run through this typical American scenario. You get unhealthy in your, or let's say you get headaches. You get a headache, and you go to your doctor, and you say, gee, doc, I've got these terrific headaches. I, Lights bother my eyes, I have to go in a dark room, I get nauseous, vomit, and he's going to look at that and say, well, those are migraine headaches. Well, we got all kinds of drugs for that. We got per Percocet, Amitrex, 
we're giving Botox injections for that now. So we'll give you a prescription, which will address the headache, but hopefully it'll help the headaches and you won't have too many side effects to the drug. But you have to ask yourself right here, by treating the symptoms of the headache, what have you done to address the unhealthy part? Nothing. <clears throat> Body's still degenerating. It's still growing more unhealthy, so over time it's going to develop another symptom. And let's say this time you get uh, acid reflux. You go to your doctor and you tell him you have all this gas and bloating and uh, burning in your stomach, and he's going to say, well, that's acid reflux. Well, we've got all kinds of drugs for that. Nexium, Prilosec, Protonix. Gives you the medication. Hopefully it relieves your stomach pains, but again, here you are taking two drugs, masking symptoms, and never ever addressed what caused it in the first place. Give it another year down the road, you're going to have another symptom. Let's say this time you get aches and pains all over your body. You go to your doctor and you describe all your aches and pains, and he says, well, that sounds like symptoms of fibromyalgia. Again, all kinds of drugs for that. Cymbalta, Lyrica, uh, Neurontin, give you the medication for it. Can you see what's wrong here? I mean, here this person is taking three drugs, all to treat uh, symptoms, and they're no healthier or nowhere near being healthy again at all, and just maintaining a poor quality of life due to the side effects and just being on these different medications. Here's the problem. The World Health Organization will tell you that the United States is number one in acute crisis care, and we are really good at that. If you're in an accident or you need a surgery, there is no place better to be than in the United States hospital. However, those same stats will tell you that we rank 37th in the world in health. There are 36 nations whose people are healthier than us. Why is that? Well, our model of healthcare, we apply acute protocols to chronic conditions, and you cannot drug your way to good health. If, you, if someone's to ask you on the first of the year, what New Year's resolution are you going to make to make yourself more healthy? Uh, is anybody here going to say, take more drugs? I mean, medications, that's why they test your liver enzymes all the time, because they're toxic to you. The fewer medications you take, the better off you are. Now, some are life-saving, and you need to take them, and yes, do that. But if you're just treating symptoms, and you're never getting to the source of your problem, what caused your body to be unhealthy, you're just spinning your wheels. I've got people coming in my office taking seven, eight, nine, ten different medications, all to treat symptoms or side effects. <clears throat> all chronic health conditions have common threads, so whether you have thyroid condition, you have uh, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, whatever, there's common uh, uh, threads that we see in this. Uh, we'll be looking at liver function, uh, your blood sugar, uh, inflammation in the body, your immune system, poor brain function. Your brain is very important that it is functioning properly for your body to function properly. In functional medicine, we look at it this way. If you ever open up one of these fancy Swiss watches in the back, you'll look inside and you'll see these, all these gears inside. And all the little gears and the bigger gears and little levers are all moving, some really slowly, some a little faster, and it's making this watch keep proper time. <clears throat> Your body's like this, all these little gears in there. You've got gears for digestion, for immune system, for thyroid, for uh, all, everything goes on in your body. If one of those gears goes down, the whole body's affected. If two or three or four or five of those gears go down, your body's really affected. So our task in functional medicine and functional neurology is to find the gears in your body that are not working right, that need attention, support, and help support those so that your body then will work properly. It's as simple as that. I have a, a patient that came to see me uh, a couple years ago. Her name was Karen, and uh, she was beside herself. She was 50, oh my goodness, 75 pounds overweight, fatigue, depression. I mean, her life was a wreck. And it, she came in the office in tears telling me how bad she felt. And she said, I heard about your office and how you do functional medicine. I knew this is where I needed to go. Well, we treated her over the course of, of uh, 90 days. And in 90 days' time, it was amazing the difference in her. She lost 35 pounds. Uh, her skin was no longer dry. Uh, she was energy all over the place. She took on a new job uh, and she has felt so much better. Uh, got off all of her blood pressure medications, reduced her thyroid medication 75%. Uh, see, when you support the body and get it to work right, the body will function the way it was intended to. It's a, an awesome creation. So let's talk about blood now. <clears throat> Have you ever been told that your blood tests are normal? I hear it all the time. People come into me saying they feel terrible, but their blood tests are normal. Well, there's a story behind that. 
When you go and have your blood test at a lab, what you do is you come back with a, a blood test that has a lab average, and that lab average is an average for that lab. That lab will take all the people that came in there that year and average out the results, and so you end up with a bell curve of results. But you have to ask yourself a question. Who goes to a lab to get their blood tested? Healthy 18-year-old physical specimens or sick people with AIDS, hepatitis, uh, diabetes, all kinds of different uh, problems? Well, when they tell you you're normal, you're normal for that sick patient that goes down to the clinic. So it's kind of crazy to think that you're normal comparing yourself to sick people. So the American Academy of Clinical Chemists and the Endocrine Society got together and they tested healthy adults. And what they found is that these lab ranges, instead of being this wide, are really much narrower. And if you want to compare yourself to healthy people, which you should, you need to be looking at a whole different parameter. So I'll give you an example. Uh, first off, every single blood test has a functional range and has a lab average. This is the lab average, 0.45 to 4.5 for TSH at Quest Labs in Tallahassee. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. If you have a thyroid problem, you're well familiar with what TSH is. Well, if you are in this range, they'll tell you that your test is normal. Well, what's the functional range? The functional range is 1.8 to 3.0. So ask yourself, what happens if you're right here or right here? You're the type of patient that falls between the cracks. They may tell you your blood sugar is fine, you're not anemic, uh, your uh, adrenal glands are functioning properly, all because you are in an area where you're not healthy, but you're not so darn sick that you fall off the edge of the lab averages. We want you to be in the healthy range here so your body's working the very best it possibly can. So. Thyroid dysfunction is a sign of metabolic dysfunction, and it's really, really important to do the proper testing. You have to have proper testing done, a complete medical profile. When we do a blood test, we run 70 different tests, not the classic ones you see come in off your what's approved by insurance companies. We go beyond that and look at everything. In our metabolic profile, we're going to see a complete thyroid panel. And notice I say complete. We'll talk about that in a minute. We want to see your vitamin D levels, how your immune system's working, a blood sugar level, a, pan, a liver panel, lipid panels. Uh, so many people have uh, hidden anemias and their body's just not getting enough oxygen to it. And there's lots of different things that can cause thyroid problems that's not really directed, uh, connected directly to the thyroid. And we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Beyond the blood tests, uh, we also look and see how your adrenal glands are functioning. And there's a test called the Adrenal Stress Index Test. This is a saliva test that you do at home where we test your cortisol levels four times a day. And your cortisol should have a certain rhythm to it and level to it. And if cortisol is too high, you, it's about impossible to lose weight. Your thyroid's not going to work right. Every cell in your body has a cortisol receptor. It's just very, very important how your body functions. Beyond that, we also test for food sensitivities. Many people have food sensitivities. They are messing with our food supply with genetically modified organisms, uh, hybridization, amortization of foods. Uh, so many people now are allergic to these foods that aren't natural. Uh, gluten, which is wheat, is not the wheat that you ate 20 years ago. I mean, wheat used to grow four and a half feet and blow in the wind. Now it grows a foot and a half, and it's the synthetic thing made in a, in a chemistry lab. Uh, soy, yeast, eggs, and dairy are also high trigger foods. So we would want to identify those, and if you are sensitive to those, you can't eat that kind of food because it's just causing your body not to work right. Uh, we can also check for the um, integrity of your gut. Your gut houses 60 to 80 percent of your immune system, and it's really, really important that your gut functions right. Most people will tell you, well, they get gassy, they have indigestion, burning, and I mean, that's a sign your gut is not working right. And you can have hidden gut infections in there. And through these testings, we can discover whether you have hidden yeasts, uh, bacteria, viruses, heavy metals, uh, parasites. A lot of people have parasites, and this will cause your body to malfunction. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the complete thyroid panel. This is what most people come into my office with, TSH and the total T4. And based on that, your doctor will decide whether or not he's going to put you on levothyroxine or armor or whatever uh, replacement hormone. In truth, there are 10 other tests that can cause a, that are comp compile a complete thyroid panel. These tests are never run. I, I don't have anyone ever come and have these tests run. 
These tests all relate to thyroid function will tell you whether your thyroid condition is secondary to something else going wrong. By looking at these values, it can tell you whether your body is converting T4 in the liver. Is your liver not functioning right, making it look like your thyroid's bad? Is your blood sugar level off? It also will affect the way your thyroid functions. Uh, are you on hormone replacement therapies? Uh, so many things come into play here. Down below here, TSH antibodies, TPO and TBG. These test for autoimmune thyroid. Many people have something called Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune thyroid. And whether you have Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroid, or Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid as well, it's not a thyroid problem. It's an immune problem. You need to be addressing the autoimmunity in your system, not necessarily your thyroid. Proper testing is so essential. So I'm going to go through a, a flow of how thyroid hormone is produced in your body from top to bottom. <clears throat> in your brain, there's something called the hypothalamus. And this hypothalamus secretes a hormone called TRH, which is thyrotropin-releasing hormone. And it sends a signal to your pituitary gland to release TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone. That will send TSH down to your adrenal, to your thyroid gland, which will tell your thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. Now, T4 93% of it is T4, which means it has four iodines. Only 7% is T3, which means it has three iodines. T3 is the type of, is the state we need it in for your body to use it. T4, your body can't use it as T4. So what happens is that has to be transported to different areas of your body to break it down. And it's going to transport most of it to the liver. 60% will be transported to the liver by a protein carrier called TBG. Now some people have too much TBG or too little TBG and the T4 can't get to the different areas to get broken down. If that's your problem, you need to address that, not your thyroid. Other tissues, the gut, liver, is where this, is, where this happens, where this T4 is broken down into T3. So these, this TBG will take it into the liver, basically, and it's gonna, trans, it's gonna convert it to T3. Active T3 is released into the blood stress system. And then as free T3, it goes to the receptor site on the cell and then into the cell. That's the key. That's the whole flow of how it works. So from the top all the way down to every body cell, so you need to get free T3 into the cell. Without free T3, that cell will not work right. It'll it got to get the energy it needs. It's just not turned on. So. Another way of looking at it is this way. Your hypothalamus is in the brain. It's going to release the TRH, which will go to the pituitary gland and tell it to release TSH. TSH will go to the thyroid gland, and it will release, free T, uh, it will release T4 and T3, again, 93% and 7%. And then that will attach to the TBG, and that will then transport it to the liver, gut, and other tissues. It will break it down to active T3. It then loses the TBG, becomes free T3, and goes to the cell receptor site. And once it, it goes in there, it goes into the cell. If all that's working right, you have no problem with your thyroid. Where in this link can a problem occur? Now, most people assume it's right there. But what happens if there's a problem right here, that the hypothalamus is not releasing TRH? What good is it to you to take and address the TSH level when this is not signaling it in the first place. It doesn't make more sense to address that. It's what we do in functional medicine. You can have a problem with your pituitary gland. Maybe your pituitary gland is not putting out enough TSH, in which case, again, you want to address the pituitary gland. This is all in the brain. From there, it could be the thyroid problem. And by the way, if, if your problem is just your thyroid, you wouldn't be watching this video, because if it is just thyroid and you have primary hypothyroidism, you're the type of person where They'll put you on the hormone replacement, and you'll feel great. They never change it, never move it, and you do great with it because the problem is the thyroid. If you're watching this, odds are it's not this. It's one of these other areas. You could have too little or too much TBG. Your liver may be congested. You have something called fatty liver where it's not breaking down the T4. Your gut, you may have gut problems, and again, if it stays as T4, it never becomes T3, you will never get T3 into that cell. 
You can have a problem at the receptor sites. Sometimes your receptor sites become overwhelmed with things like cortisol, too much cortisol in your system. Uh, if it doesn't get into the cell, you're going to have a problem. So there's six different areas where you can have a problem, not just one. And our workup with functional neurology and our metabolic workup is to find out which one or two or three is going on in your body, address that so that your body functions right and you don't have any more thyroid symptoms. So remember, the key is to getting that T3 into that cell. So what makes our office different? Well, we leave no stone unturned to determine the exact cause of your condition and then address that cause and correct that cause. All the cases are treated with the neurologic therapy and the metabolic therapy. So let's talk about that. Your brain is a master computer. It tells your body what to do. And it, if it's not functioning right, your body will not function right. It's receiving data all the time, and it's putting data back. And there's this constant flow of information that goes from the brain to the body parts. So with that in mind, we do what's called neurological therapy, uh, a brain-based therapy, where we want to make sure the brain has four quadrants. They're all balanced. They're functioning well. A lot of people will get a tiredness, a fatigue in their brain. And uh, we want to know if that's going on, because in your brain, you've got that hypothalamus, which is going to go to the pituitary gland, which is going to go down to your thyroid. And we have to make sure that that linkage is all working properly. Uh, how does this happen in the brain? Chemical, physical, and emotional uh, stress, it's just like the, what the body's subjected to. The brain is an organ just like your liver, your pancreas. I mean, it takes stress. And if it gets fatigued and tired, you're going to have fewer impulses coming out of your brain. Uh, this is a graphic uh, presentation of that. Uh, one side of the brain, nice and awake. Other side, kind of sleeping. This, is, this side of the brain is going to be sending information over and should be getting response back. And uh, when this side is sleeping, it's just going to get minimal response back. And this is a brain that's fatigued and it's just sleepy. <coughs> so what we want to do is we want to wake up the areas of the brain and balance them up. What's that take? Well, the brain needs basically two things to function pr properly. It needs fuel and activation. It's going to get the fuel from the food you eat, glucose and oxygen. And then activation is from using your brain. People that sit down all day and just watch TV and hit the remote control are not going to have good brain health because you have to fire those neurons to keep them active. So going out for a walk, doing different things can help your brain function. Uh, we want to activate those. We have therapies in our office we use using functional neurology where we may do unilateral treatments on one side to stimulate your cerebellum on this side and your uh, upper brain on this side. Uh, we may have you do certain eye exercises at home. There's, a, there's just a slew of different tests we can do and different uh, therapies to help balance up brain function. And our examination will show us what is deficient in your body, if anything. So the idea is to come in with this brain-based therapy and get both sides communicating evenly back and forth to each other. So summarizing, how are we going to help your thyroid condition? First, we're going to find through your lab testing what's causing your thyroid dysregulation. And then we're going to remove those causes. Uh, at that same time, we will want to repair the damaged tissue. And we, may do use that, and we will do that using certain uh, supplements. Uh, we don't use any drugs or medication. Uh, we will use herbs, minerals, vitamins, uh, homeopathic remedies sometimes. Uh, they'll be administered as a, like a milkshake uh, that you would drink in the morning. Uh, you may take a sublingual under your tongue. You may run, rub a transdermal cream into your elbow. Uh, you, uh, we have liquids, too, that you put under your tongue or you just swallow a tablet. Uh, we also will do any balancing of your immune system if we find any dysregulation there. And then through neurological testing, if you have any decreased frequency of firing in your brain, we want to go ahead and improve that and balance that back out as well. I call this slide living life. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories. This, this gentleman came to see me in my second year of practice many years ago. And he was 93 years old, walks in the door with this limp. Doc, oh, my, I, my back is killing me. And, and behind him is his 94-year-old wife. And uh, they're so cute, they've been married 71 years. And uh, he accused her of robbing the cradle. But uh, they were a real cute couple. And he goes in my, off in my office, and I consult with him and examine him and treat him. And he gets off the table and says, wow, I feel better already. Thanks a lot. And he heads for the front desk. He goes up front, and I said to him, well, I'd like to follow up with you next week just to make sure everything's OK. He says, no, I can't come in next week. I said, why not? I mean, you're 93. What are you doing? 
And she says, he can't come in next week. And she pulls up this planner and she opens it up and I'll be darned if for the next two weeks he has something penciled in every single hour all through the week. He says, Doc, on, on Fridays mornings I go down to the senior center to visit the old folks as I play double level chess with one of the guys down there. And I thought, this guy's amazing. Here he's 93 years old, living life to the fullest. He didn't, he didn't take any medications, no walkers, no canes, nothing. The human body was made to work right. And if we just take care of it and set the stage right for it to work right, I mean, life can be very sweet. I thought, this guy's my idol. I want to be like him when I'm 93 years old. <clears throat> so let's bust some myths up here. And these are some comments I get from people occasionally. First one, I'm too old. Uh, I don't understand anyone who say they're too old to get better. Now, if I think there's no hope for you to get better, I will tell you so right up front. But the thing, I mean, if you're 80 years old and you're going to live to be 93, I mean, you're going to spend the next 13 years miserable because you think you're too old to get better? Unfortunately, most people come to my office will be 50 years old saying, I've had thyroid problem for 20 years, and it's just too far gone. i got to live with it. Uh, you can never be too old to feel better. Life is too short to be miserable. Uh, another myth is uh, it's genetic, and I get this a lot. And it's possible that there is a genetic connection to all kinds of chronic conditions. The problem is a lot of times it's a cop-out. You can also inherit eating habits and other things that are more nature versus nurture. Uh, also, in medicine right now, there, there's a big study on something called epigenetics, where we're actually, they're actually finding that there's things called methyl donors that you can take that can actually um, ameliorate the effects of a genetic fault. So in other words, if you have lupus, you, don't necessarily ex you won't necessarily uh, exhibit all the symptoms of the lupus by taking these methyl donors. And it's a whole new field of science, which is really exciting. So don't think it's genetic. I mean, there's, there's always hope. My worst advice I ever hear is I have people tell me, I've been to Mayo, I've been to Shands, I've been everywhere, and they told me, learn to live with it. I mean, that, that's just giving up. That's like saying, just learn to be miserable. Just, I don't know, there's always got to be an answer. You just got to, you can't give up. Life is too short to give up. Functional medicine is getting much more popular. You're going to find integrative uh, departments of integrative health at Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, down at Shands. Uh, Dr. Oz, also on his TV show, shows many different uh, doctors coming in there practicing functional medicine. Now, something about functional medicine that you need to know is that it's not necessarily uh, the right approach for everybody. Uh, you have to be really willing to change your habits, and you have to be able to take your health, take, take the bull by the horns and say, I'm going to fix this thing. If you want to sit back and wait for a magic pill to come around that some pharmaceutical company is going to give you this pill, uh, that some insurance company is going to give you the answer, or the government, you're going to have a long, hard wait. You need to search it out. You need to get it right. Your life is too short and too precious to just sit around waiting for something to happen. So what's next? You should schedule a consultation. Come in for a consultation. We'll see whether you fit into a criterion that we would accept you as a patient. If you're a good candidate for this care, we'll tell you so. If you're not, we'll tell you so. First visit, you'll come in. We'll have a consultation. We'll discuss your condition. I'll listen to what you have to say, look at your goals and just what, what you're dealing with in your life. Then we will review any current blood tests you have. We'll take your blood tests and we'll put them into our computer. That we'll put out the results into functional ranges and we'll see if you're not having other problems going on that are causing your thyroid problem and uh, how we address those. At that point in time, we may say, yes, you need some other blood tests drawn as well, and we would address that at that time. Uh, there are three different uh, questionnaires that we give you, and there's lots of questions on them. And as you answer these questions, they're, they're sectioned. And as you answer them, it, it gives us clues as to whether your gut's working right, your pancreas, your adrenal glands, uh, your gallbladder. And uh, so we use all that to compile to look and assess your situation. Uh, at that point in time, we would uh, recommend doing a functional neurological exam, because we want to know that your brain is healthy, it's not tired and fatigued, and it is working right, and it's getting the right messages out to the rest of your body. Uh, that would be the end of your first visit. Uh, after your first visit, uh, the front desk, they'll schedule you uh, for probably a week later or so, and then we'll sit down with you and we'll tell you whether we accept your case. If we do accept your case, we're going to go through all the findings we found in your exam, all the blood findings, all the intake form findings, and from that we will give you a, an overview of your, what your treatment plan would be and any other financial obligations that would be in your case. So at that point in time, we know what you need to have done, what you can do at home, what we do here, and whatnot. So uh, call our office at 850-878-5636. Uh, we just love helping people with chronic conditions, and uh, 
the only way you can find out whether we can help you is for you to make an appointment for a consultation. Hope you got something out of this. You have a great day. Thank you.